Welcome. My name is Kim Bess with the City of Goldsboro. Joining me in the studio today, I have Goldsboro Police Chief Jeff Stewart. I have Program Manager from Rebuilding Broken Places, Ms. Francine Smith. And I have Captain Chero from the Goldsboro Police Department. She is the captain who is in charge of the Goldsboro Partners Against Crime. Welcome everyone. Glad to have you in the studio today. Nice to be here. Okay. Thanks for having us. We are here to give the community an update on how our GPAC, Goldsboro Partners Against Crime, how it's doing, why it was formed, and what it is. So Chief, if you'll tell me a little background, you and um, Captain Chero, about GPAC, G-P-A-C, Goldsboro Partners Against Crime. Why was it started and what is the purpose of GPAC? We had a number of uh, our citizens um, that were killed in 2012. Um, and the citizens, we, had, we went to different groups and talked with them and they wanted something done. They wanted to get the community involved and the police department needed that. So uh, we heard about the program in High Point, the High Point model. Uh, the city manager, myself, uh, Captain Chero, we went up there and we watched one of their call-ins. And I was very impressed with that. I think the city manager was as well. So we came back to Goldsboro with that program and uh, the hard work of uh, Captain Chero and others, which you'll talk about probably later, um, it, the program has been, what I think, very successful. Now this is a two-year-old program, correct? Yes. When did we actually start the program? I knew there was a lot of behind-the-scenes work. That we actually started in 2012 toward the end of the summer. And actually I had to approach um, probation and parole. That's what started this whole um, process because I needed them to be able to get the offenders in and to help me to identify who we needed to give these chances to um, kind of make the decisions of where we wanted to go with different things so those were the ones that I first got on board then I also had to talk with different law enforcement agencies we work actually with a lot of federal agencies ATF and DEA the US Marshals the US Attorney's Office um, obviously probation and we also had to form the second part of things which was our community pe um, side. So there's two different sides, there's two to, different this, sides. to this program. The community resource side. Correct. And then the, the law, law enforcement. enforcement side. Okay so tell me more if you will about the community side. The community side we had to go looking for people that would be willing to help us and also be willing to work with ex-offenders or violent offenders or um, drug users, drugs, you know, people that deal drugs, things like that, and that would be comfortable doing that. What were they trying to do? How, you say trying to help these people, trying to help them do what? Get different resources. There is a lot of, of resources that are available in Wayne County, but not many people know about them. Um, as far as like substance abuse counseling, um, help getting employment, things like that. And one of the main people I had first met was Miss Francine Smith, and she was such an asset to us. She introduced me to people that I didn't even know existed in Wayne County. So that was a good start to our program. So GPAC is a program that basically gives offenders a second chance. A second chance. Yes. And a second chance to do what? To choose to go down two different paths. Correct. They can choose to use these resources that you all have gathered together yes. to help make some, some positive choices in their life and change their life. Correct. Or they can choose once they've been notified by coming to one of these call-ins that we'll yes. explain in a minute, if they choose not to use the resources and change their life, they go down the other path, which is reoffending. Correct. And what happens at that point? It depends on what, what the offense is, things like that, and their background. A, a lot of our offenders have the potential to go to federal court. That's how bad some of their backgrounds are, and that's what we look at. Right. And that's the message that they're going to hear. You can either go with state court or you can go to federal court, and it's up to them. Now, once a person, an offender, has been notified, what, what does that mean? That means that they're, I put them into a database, and their information, if they've been rearrested in it, even like throughout North Carolina or even in a different state, it will flag my database, and I can let that agency know that they've been notified. If they get arrested again for a violence offense or a drug offense, um, I do what's called a fast track report and that is sent to all the law enforcement agencies involved in the program. So that goes all, that's through the entire nation? That is for everybody here in North Carolina. Right, right. Okay, so if they reoffend, 
and you have sent them on a fast track, what does that mean? That means that the court system is going to get them in there quicker. We also use, if it's say a felony drug offense, we're using a private lab now instead of using the state lab where we can have up to a year to two years delay mm -hmm. in getting the evidence back. We now have a turnaround of two to three weeks. Um, so that's been a big asset to us. Absolutely. Okay, well Ms. Francine, tell me a little more about why you got involved. You've been here since day one. She was one of your very yes. first community resources that was a part of GPAC and very willing to be a part of GPAC. Tell me why you chose to be a part of it. Well, at the time, <coughs> I was um, the facilitator for Stop the Funeral Initiative. Mm -hmm. And one of our focuses was specifically for former offenders. That's who we targeted. We wanted to help them. Mm -hmm. And the police chief, the police department in general, were partners with us in, in, that, initiative? in that initiative. Oh, okay. Definitely. They helped us with a lot of the things that we did. And every year, we would have a conference where we brought in former offenders and we would provide resources for them as well. So when GPAC, when she approached me about GPAC, mm -hmm. this was like a perfect fit. Absolutely <laughs> perfect mm -hmm. fit. Yeah, absolutely. It really was. Well now, about how many community resources do you have involved in this program as of right now? As of right now, probably at least 20. Um, however, there, there are always different programs coming up and right. Maybe one, one program might not be right for you, but it might be, all, you know, good for him. So we right. have to kind of fit the program with the offender. So they're sort of tailor-made to fit yes. the offenders and what mm -hmm. their needs are. Well, you mentioned earlier that we have call-ins. If you would tell me and explain what a call-in is. A call-in is, we've actually, we have a call-in um, every quarter. So four times a year we'll have a call-in. These are offenders that are on probation or post-release supervision and they come to the call-ins at the request of their probation officer and they hear a message. They hear a message from the community side, then they also hear the law enforcement message. Obviously the community's letting them know, okay, we know you messed up, but we're willing to help you. The law enforcement side is saying, you have this opportunity, you need to take advantage of it. If you don't, these could be the consequences. So they're basically telling them they have two options once again. Correct use these resources that have been put before you to help you find a job, change your life, whatever their, their issues are and whichever path they'd like to take on the community side, it's sitting there waiting for Yes. It. Or if you don't, the law enforcement are telling you what, what you're going to face Correct. at that point Correct. on the fast track. Yes. Okay. So these offenders can't just leave Wayne County and go do something in another county and, and, and get away with it. Is that no, correct? it's going to come up in our database. Okay. All right. Well, Ms. Francine, tell me a little more about your participation in this program and, and why you chose to be a part of it and anything else you'd like to share. Okay. Um, one of the things that we wanted to, to try to do is to help uh, former offenders find employment and keep employment. Oh. You know, finding it sometimes may be okay, but keeping it and knowing how to keep a job. And having and those tools. Having those tools. So we tried several ways of trying to get them to come in and to participate, and yeah. it was difficult. Right, it's difficult right. to get people to realize when they need help. Of course. So we we wanted to partner with GPAC to help us be able to to better reach out to those those in the community that really do need that help. Mm -hmm. um, I'm involved and invested in this because I see the need almost daily. Wow. Now, even if I don't see the offenders, I see the children, mm -hmm. I see the families. So it's something that we have to we have to be a part of. We have to be in it. Yeah, we have to be in it, and we have to be in it to provide whatever resources and help we can. Well, you know, and we we're asked about it all the time in our community. You know, what is GPAC doing? Is it successful? Um, are are we calling in the right people? You know, those are the questions we get asked all the time. It's still in the very beginning stages. Yes. We're just in our second year. Mm -hmm. In the beginning when this was created, I believe you all gave a, a time frame of what you all thought would be a correct time frame to be able to show has it been successful and what would you say that time frame would have been? Again, I'm going to reflect back, you know, and we were told from the start when we went to High Point, it's going to take anywhere from three to five years to get the statistics and the database there. Um, in my opinion, and I, I'd be happy to share my opinion, um, we've had over 127 Seven. Um, people called in and notified, and only a handful, you know, what's the correct number, Captain? It's 16. 16. Have re-offended. Re so, on the surface, it oh looks goodness. like it's very effective. Yeah. 
Well, you know, and, and there are other communities in North Carolina and across the United States that are doing similar programs. Yes. I mean, I know myself, I went to Fayetteville and watch their program. It's called Ceasefire. I mean, everybody has a different name maybe, but it's all about doing mm-hmm. the same, same thing. thing. Right, trying to make their community, community safer and working together to do it. And, and one thing it's done also too, and I have to credit probation again with this um, because I actually have someone um, that was assigned to me and we're on a daily contact. Right. It's opened up the communication between, our, from the federal authorities all the way down to us at the state right. and local level. And um, when these offenders do reoffend, if I can't touch them through my program, probation might be able to do something or another agency might be able to do something. So there's always something going on. You know, and I think that's the key word, communication. Correct. And you know, from the, from the federal level all the way down to local correct. level, now you all have that. And you have all these different tools to help us all be safer, mm-hmm. understand how to make ourselves safer, and how to possibly change the lives of yes. the offenders. Yes. You know, offending one time, two times, three times, you're still given the opportunity in this program to come into this call in and be put before you layers upon layers of resources right here in Wayne County, Mm -hmm. right here in their own community, they can make that decision to change their life. That's the ultimate goal is to change your life for the better. Right. And and a lot of them have, they have the same opportunities with their, with their probation officers. Um, These resources are available to them as well. It, we're just kind of reinforcing what they already know is Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And sometimes maybe we just need to see both sides. Correct. Correct. And Again, the Collins are, you know, the community is welcome to come and view a call in every time we have one. And they're held right here at City Hall in City Council Chambers quarterly. Um, and it's a, a, a very touching program when you're hearing the community side. It's a very strong message. About yes. Y- you go it right ahead. The message oh. that, that is, is portrayed is not just a message of if you continue to do this, this is, you know, you're going to jail, you're going right. to federal prison. The message also is these are lives that you're affecting. There are families message. that come out up there and talk about having lost their children. They've, their children have been shot and killed. Their children have be, have been offenders and end right up in here jail. in Wayne County. Yes, it's a personal. It message. Is, it's a very personal, very very personal message. And because of that, I know personally, I have watched from the very beginning. I've been there from the very first call in, and I have watched that those young men and women come in and sit down, and they're when they start out, they you can tell mm-hmm. the entire body language. They don't want to be there. Yes, but by the end of the night. People are sitting on the edge of their seat. They are listening. They are hearing. They are, you're getting eye contact mm-hmm. with everyone. It makes a difference for you're them exactly to even right. know that anyone cares enough about them to tell them their story mm-hmm. and to let them know that there's help and hope. And, and, and what's, we, what's strange today is that today is actually um, an anniversary of one of my community people that actually come up and talk and shares her story of the anniversary of the, mm-hmm. the death of her son. Oh, my goodness. And um, I spoke with her earlier today and just kind of hugged her neck. So yeah. it makes a difference. It does make a difference, and it does make it very personal. Mm-hmm. It makes it very personal for those of us involved in the program yes. as well as the offenders that are coming. And, you know, I- I've watched myself at these GPAC call-ins, the difference in the body language. It's amazing. It is. It you know, really it's, is. It's about a two-hour program, hour and a half, two-hour program. And by the end, it is amazing how their body language changes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We just want it to to take take hold and be in their life long term. Right. Mm-hmm. Changing Absolutely. their life is the point of this program. Absolutely. Well, you were recently quoted. Would you like to, to share anything <laughs> about that, Ms. Francine? Yes, I sure would. Um, the, the misquotes, I, I, I won't say that I was quoted, I'll say misquotes that uh, appeared in the paper uh, certainly did not reflect my opinion of what GPAC is and what it's doing. I wouldn't be invested in it, I wouldn't be involved in it if those were my thoughts and my feelings. They were not. The conversations that I had back in November with the reporter were about a totally different program. It was about Stop the Funeral Initiative. And the truth is that we, once GPAC got started, our partners with Stop the Funeral Initiative kind of stepped back. Mm -hmm. But I stay involved because I still believe in redemption. I believe in, in changing people's lives. If I didn't believe in that, I would not be a part of it. Right. And I support the work 
that GPAC is doing, and I hope to continue to be a part of it. I think it is, I, first of all, I couldn't speak to success of it or uh, not success because I haven't done any of that research. Right, right. So how, could I, how would I know? Yeah. I don't look at those numbers. What I do look at are the faces that are in that room when we have those call-ins. I look in those eyes. And usually I am either last or next to last to speak mm -hmm. to them. So by the time I'm talking to them, I can see the difference in what they mm -hmm. have heard and the impact that that's having. That's why I'm involved in it. That's why I continue to do it. And that's how I measure its success. I think it is a successful program, judging from what I see in the eyes of the people who are participating. Well, you have been such a strong piece of this puzzle since day one, yes. along with many other pieces that we'll hear from in just a minute or two. And I want to say thank you on behalf of the city and the Goldsboro Police Department for your involvement mm -hmm. and for all of those that have started and continued and have continued to add into this program and add more and more layers of how we can help possibly yes. change the lives of people right here in Wayne County yeah, and the absolutely. city of Goldsboro. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. We appreciate it and we'll continue on with more information about GPAC. Joining us now, I have Miss Cynthia Sutton. Would you tell us who you're with and what your uh, your title is? Okay, my name is uh, Cynthia Sutton. I'm with the Department of Public Safety. Uh, I am the Judicial District Manager of Lenore, Green, and Wayne Counties. All right, absolutely. Can you tell us, uh, Captain Chero, why her division and her department is so critical in making GPAC work? They're so critical. It's Without them, I couldn't have even started this program. I, I would have stopped right at the beginning if my conversation didn't meet with someone that said, okay, let's take a look at this. The offenders that we call in are actually on probation. The probation officers are the ones that identify them. Sometimes they'll feel like, well, maybe this could help somebody, or maybe this is somebody that needs to be hear this message to let them know what the consequences could be. Um, that kind of like the kids' gloves, gloves are off at this point. Right. And without them, we couldn't have even started this. That's critical, absolutely critical. critical. Well, Cynthia, can you tell me why you all chose to be a part of this program and what you see it doing here in Wayne County? Well, we became a part of this program because we're here part of the community. Uh, mm -hmm. We have contact with the same offenders. We supervise the offenders and they commit crimes. So right. we, in some way, we are joined together because mm. we're monitoring the same people. And um, collaboration with uh, GPAC helps us keep an eye on our offenders. Uh, we got more than one set of eyes watching. And, and through communication and collaboration with the agencies, we're able to help reduce crime. And that's what we're trying to do here. Um, our goal and our mission with the Department of Public Safety is about public safety, mm -hmm. protecting the, the citizens of this community. So this is our way of, of trying to help protect the community. And uh, we can do that through GPAC because we're working with some of the same offenders. Well, you know, and we've talked about it before, when we come to a call-in, we have representatives there from so many different pieces of our community, but also many different levels of law enforcement. Correct. And you all are there. Yes. You yes. all are there from, from being out in the community, and actually, you are the ones who pick who mm -hmm. is a part of GPAC. Yes. And why do you choose people to be a part of this program, certain people to be a part of this? Well, we, we, we focus on those offenders that have extensive criminal histories. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, been in our system for so long and that's where we need to focus. These are the ones we need to get off the street. Um, so we look at those offenders who have violent offenses such as murder, um, sexual offenses, um, extensive drug histories. These violent, you're more violent mm -hmm. offenders and if we can get that group off the um, street then we chipped that, that block, we right. chipped away at that block mm -hmm. a little bit. So that's what we're trying to do is identify those major, right, major people that are involved mm -hmm. in the criminal activity. That are causing that. a lot of the activity mm -hmm. right here in our community. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the overall goal of GPAC, Goals were Partners Against Crime. Mm -hmm. It is partnering together as a community yes. to fight this crime and to stop it. Mm -hmm and to help change the lives of these individuals and yes. give them the opportunity yes. to, to make that decision. They're the ultimate one making that decision. Mm -hmm. You choose to go down the path of use these resources, make a difference in your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or choose not to Correct. and reoffend, and then they have to suffer the consequences from Correct. that point forward. Mm -hmm. And they're put on the fast track. Yes. They've been notified. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we've been two years into this. We've called in 127 yes. offenders. Only so far 16 have repeated. That says within itself, just looking at statistical numbers, 
it's a success so far just by looking at reoffenders. Mm -hmm. if we're just looking at the levels of crime. Mm -hmm. Now, has it touched every single person in this community that's ever committed a crime? No. no, no. But also, too, you have to look with the fast track people and those offenders, those are the ones that are meeting the criteria to either go to federal court, possibly um, be in violation of their probation or their post-release supervision. Those are our more violent offenders. Those are our felony offenders. Right. Um, some of them are going to have driving charges or different misdemeanor things. We're worried about their felony offenses, and those are the ones that right. we're fast-tracking. Right, right. Fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for being with us today. We want to constantly, at least once a year, give an update on GPAC, what is mm -hmm. happening, who's involved, who the players are at the table, mm -hmm. and how we can continue to help put these opportunities sure. out there to change the lives of these offenders in our community. So we appreciate what you're doing. We appreciate what you are doing heading this up. We hear all the time what a fantastic job you're doing in thank leading you. this program. We appreciate it. And of course, got to say thank you to Chief Stewart. If it wasn't for you okaying and, and saying, let's go for it. Let's go check out other programs very similar to this across the state. And let's, let's mimic it. Let's do the very best we can do for Goldsboro and Wayne County and make our own program. Well, I'd like to add, the partners that are involved in this pro program are the most professional group mm. of individuals I've ever worked with. So thank you, Ms. Cynthia, Ms. Francine that was here earlier, and all the other partners in GPAC because it simply won't work without everybody working together. Right. Mm -hmm. You're right, you're right. And you know, you've talked earlier about, you know, we have our local district attorneys, we have people all the way up to the federal government involved in this program. Yes, we do. And again, it's open to the public. I, and I encourage them to come out there and, and see one of these call-ins mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. themselves. When is our next uh, one? We have one coming up within two weeks, February 24th. February 24th, it starts at six o'clock p.m. Here in the new here city. In the new in the city hall, historic city hall, in the council chambers. Yes, I believe that you'll see from what the city, uh, the county, and all the agencies involved, the state and federal uh, agencies as well. That hour and a half will well be worth mm -hmm. your time to see that calling. I totally agree. We'd like to invite you all to come. Thank you for being with us. This is an update on GPAC Goldsboro Partners Against Crime.